Okay, so that's fairness, accountability. What about transparency? And for transparency, that really means is there is there a way that I can understand the output that the, the classification or the prediction, the output of the model? Because right now these models are black boxes. And in the end, it's going to be some doctor who has to make a decision based on that prediction that, oh, yes, well, that looks like um, a tumor cell um, uh, because some black box model is looking at the image and saying, yeah, I think there's a tumor cell there. So why should the doctor trust this decision, this output? Transparency will help. And the reason I um, want to just focus on deep neural networks, so how many of you heard of deep neural networks? Everyone's hand should be raised. Okay, this is the hottest uh, topic in AI. This is what's driving this AI revolution, sweeping all corporations around the world. Um, it's DNNs, so if you don't know about deep neural networks, you probably should learn uh, about them. And it's astounding to me as a computer scientist the uh, number of successful applications DNNs has, ha has had. However, that's, that's great as a practitioner, however, as a scientist, we are clueless as to why they work. In other words, they're not very transparent. And so here we have this te great technology that is beating the world's records in image recognition, speech recognition, machine translation, you name it. All these things that we thought were going to be difficult um, AI tasks. It was part of the system that beat Go, the Go human Go player. So th this, this astounding technology, we don't understand why it works from a scientific point of view. So this is now the challenge to the science community. Let me just show you how easy it is to manipulate these DNNs, or not so much manipulate the DNNs, but the output of the DNNs. So here's a great example of image recognizer. On the left, you see a panda bear, a picture of a panda bear, and the DNN classifies this panda with 57% confidence that it's a panda. All I do is add a little noise, that's the middle picture, do some multiplication of the pixels, and I produce an output picture that to you and I, to, to you and me, looks like a panda, but this DNN classifier now thinks it's a gibbon with even higher confidence. It's not a gibbon. It's, I mean, it doesn't look like a gibbon to me. A gibbon is a monkey. And a pandas are bears. It's not even getting that type right. Um, of course, if you look closely, you can see why it might think it's a given, because if you look at the eyes and so on, you can Im always imagine answers to that. But this goes to show how easy it is to basically produce the wrong answer from this black box. Here's another example, um, and this is now getting closer to home in terms of self-driving cars. So we can manipulate images, um, and in this particular example, I won't walk through the details, but we can manipulate a stop sign by just adding a little graffiti on that stop sign and fool a self-driving car into thinking it's not a stop sign. And if we can do that by just putting a little black patch on the stop sign and fool the self-driving car into thinking it's not a stop sign, what does that mean? It means when we're driving through that intersection, we could crash. Not good. Here's something more alarming. It turns out that what I showed was a manipulation of images. Um, we can also manipulate audio. And this is an example of where um, the, uh, the researchers basically t took videos of Barack Obama speaking and through manipulation was able to make Barack Obama say anything. So we, here we are all worried about fake news and everything. Well, this is the ultimate. Okay, now I'm scaring you enough? Okay. So I already mentioned EU GDPR. I think one of the, they have four pillars of, of the Privacy Act right to access, right to be forgotten, and data portability. 
But the one that really is quite a challenge to the science community is what's called right to explanation. And the reason I say it's a challenge to the science community is, as I mentioned already, these DNNs are quite powerful, but we don't know how they work from a scientific point of view. So how can we give an explanation? This is an area of active research. It's so active that DARPA actually put a program together called Explainable AI to promote, to, to push the scientific community to start addressing this very, very important, hard challenge. So now let me get to ethics. Um, how many people here have heard of the trolley car problem? Well, this trolley car problem is a canonical ethical question. Um, basically, it says, which is better? Kill one person or kill four people? There's no right answer to that. <laughs> but our self-driving cars are going to have to start making those kinds of decisions. And now, all of a sudden, we have to face, as technologists, these kinds of ethical questions, and we can't run away from them. And this is a non, again, I hate to bring up recent events, but these are um, you know, the Uber self-driving car. We don't know what, why the problem is, but we are already seeing self-driving cars killing people um, or um, cars in self-driving mode killing people. Um, and so we, we do know that the first incident of the Tesla crash back in Florida in 2016 was due to very likely the image system getting confused, not expecting a, a bright white van against a bright blue sky. Um, also, of course, I don't have to argue the importance of all of this in terms of the um, implications on the political system. And most recently, um, the Cambridge Analytica harvesting Facebook d data that was um, uh, uh, affecting now 87 million um, Americans. So there are ethical questions in terms of the data we collect, especially about individuals, and about what we do with that data. That's basically the bottom line. And it really hit me home when I was at Microsoft and we produced a chatbot, a 17-year-old, edgy, young female, very engaging, hip uh, chatbot, her name was Tay. We, we released her March 23rd, 2016, and within 24 hours, we had to take her down. And this is because she started repeating the most inappropriate, offensive, ugly language you can imagine. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. And she got all that by repeating what was basically being tweeted in Twitter feeds. It was the underground of the, the internet trolls discovered her and made her repeat all these bad things. Uh, this was a lesson for us at Microsoft. Uh, it's not that we didn't think about it, um, but we had to think much harder about the ethical implications of what seemed to be, you know, an innocuous, cool, chatty, hip uh, teenager. Uh, not real, not real, of course. So that was quite a lesson, and I think uh, companies like Microsoft, Google, uh, Facebook, and so on, um, all, all learned from that. Let me turn to the last letter in the acronym, which is S. Michael's signaling me. I've two minutes left. S stands for safety and security, and I'm just going to talk about a very small example um, to say that we are making progress. Um, and I'm going to talk about this again in the context of self-driving cars, and I'm very proud to talk about this example because it's work done here at Columbia University in our computer science department, um, and it is very recent work, 2017, and it got the best paper award. So, yay! Um, it's not my work, it's my colleagues' works, but I, I love bragging about my colleagues. So what they were able to do was basically systematically look at deep neural networks and generate images that would cause the DNNs to classify the image incorrectly. 
So for instance, they took an image on the left you see, which uh, rightly tells, the classifier, classifier rightly says, veer to the left. Um, and they modified the image just slightly by darkening it, which would be a natural thing. You know, you, we don't always drive in bright sunlight. And then the classifier does the wrong thing and says, veer to the right. This can obviously cause a fatal error. And they found thousands of fatal errors in 15 state-of-the-art DNNs um, for the um, most used image data set called ImageNet for self-driving cars and for actually also for finding this in malware. So this is really great work. It's the tip of the iceberg of what we could be doing. So let me um, remind you of my acronym, Fairness, Accountability, Transparency, Ethics, Safety, and Security. I have a lot more story to go with each of those letters. Um, one question you might ask me as a te technologist is what can we actually do? Let's be constructive. Um, and starting from the output, working backwards, we can actually output probabilities and distributions, not just it's a cat, you will click here, not just these binary decisions. We can publish our algorithms and our models and our parameters, and we can also provide individuals data collected about them. This seems obvious to me, to all of us today. Um, it must have been a really novel idea a few months ago. Okay, there is a lot of interest now in, talk, in, in the community about regulation. Should we regulate AI? Um, what should it look like? Uh, should we regulate Facebook? What should that look like? Uh, and I'm not going to go into that. I just want to say that companies do care. Uh, it is their bottom line. Um, after all, customers, we are uh, their customers. Um, and there are new questions for the, uh, the society in general, but certainly for the science and engineering community more specifically to address in terms of data science, machine learning, and AI. So thank you very much. Remember my tagline. <laughs>